Hi, I'm JP and you're watching The Coffee Channel. Now today I have a challenge and that challenge is to find out whether we can buy a drinkable flat white in a high street chain coffee shop. Now you may wonder why we want to do this. Well we've all been in the situation where we're in a new town and we don't know where the independent coffee shops are or there aren't any independent coffee shops or it's a Sunday and they're all closed. You may have thought why don't I go to a Starbucks? Why don't I go to a Costa? They must make something that's vaguely drinkable in there, right? Well, we'll see today. But first of all, we're going to look at what makes good flat white, how it should look, what are the features of it and how it should taste. So here we have a flat white I've just made. What are its main features? Well, the five ounce cup, sometimes it might be six ounces, but I personally prefer a five ounce cup. Um, we've got textured milk, um, it's got a fairly light texture to it, so it's a bit less air in it than in a cappuccino. Um, it's double espresso, some people argue it might be single espresso, but generally a double works best in this size of cup. Um, we've got a bit of latte art on there. I'm not expecting this in any uh, chain coffee shop. The main thing is that the milk's textured correctly. The latte art just tells you the milk's textured correctly rather than affects the flavour in any particular way. Um, and it should have a nice clean taste and your foam should go all the way down to the bottom so as you drink it that pattern should stay under the whole way it shouldn't be like you drink the top level of froth and then you end up with just a, a normal coffee with milk in it the texture should stay all the way down through the cup should have a nice balanced flavor should be relatively strong but not too strong should be sweet should have different flavors in there it shouldn't be too roasty or over extracted it shouldn't be acidic it just tastes really clean, really nice, lovely sort of morning drink. Now, let's see what the first of the coffee chains can do. Okay, here we are at Starbucks. I'm about to go in. Wish me luck. Well, Got my coffee. It looks like a flat white. It's quite big. Must be about seven ounces, so it's way too big. Surprisingly, latte art. A passable uh, attempt at latte art there. It's not amazing, but I was, wasn't expecting anything at all, actually. Um, milk texture looks about right, to be honest. Now, I heard some really weird things going on with the steaming uh, arm. There was a lot of. <laughs> Um, so I'm slightly worried this is going to be at a nuclear temperature. So I'm going to give it a little while to cool off. But so far, it actually doesn't look that bad. It looks a lot better than I expected. Well, right, it, yeah. let's give it a go. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so actually, temperature, not that bad. In fact, I'd say almost the right temperature, amazingly enough. Um, in terms of the actual coffee, pretty roasty, but not diabolical. It really, I could probably drink all of this. It's not that bad. It's okay. There you go. Now, off to the next one. Right, so we're in um, Coffee One now. This is a chain that you'll find in uh, southwest of the UK and parts of Wales. It's not a nationwide chain, but it's growing. Um, I'll have to see what the coffee's like here. Let's go. Okay, so I've got my flat white here. Um, no latte arts. Milk texture is all right. It's actually a little bit thick. It's more like I'd expect a cappuccino to be. The equipment in there is actually a lot better than Starbucks. Whereas there are bean to cup machines in Starbucks, they've got more what you'd expect to find in the speciality coffee shop. Uh, they've got a La Mazzocco Linear uh, PB machine, which is a really good espresso machine. Vittorio Arduino grinders. Again, really good. The sort of thing you'd expect to find in a specialty shop. Now, I haven't got any latte art. Milk's a bit oversteamed. It looks a bit like it's going to be too hot. In fact, the barista warned me of how hot it was, which is never a great sign. So 
I'm going to take this with some trepidation. In fact, I think we might actually wait a little bit before I drink this because I don't really want to burn my tongue. Okay, so we'll let it cool down a bit. I'm going to taste it now, see what it's like. Let's have a look. Okay, so it's actually quite a similar espresso underneath to the Starbucks one. It's pretty dark, much darker than I thought, given this is uh, roasted by Clifton Coffee, as far as I'm aware, which is a speciality coffee roaster, but it's probably at the cheaper end of their market. Um, it's got a very dark roasted taste. It's not over extracted. The espresso's okay. It's probably no better than Starbucks. The texture's a bit, a bit more cappuccino-y, so it's actually less good as a flat white. The coffee as a whole, mm, it's fairly mediocre. I'd say it's on, it's on a par with the Starbucks one, maybe slightly better, uh, but certainly not amazing. Okay, last of our three high street coffee chains here. This is Costa, most ubiquitous of the UK coffee chains. Absolutely loads of them all over the place. Probably the one I'd imagine is going to be the worst, but we'll go in and we'll see. Hi, uh, uh, can I have a small flat white to have in, please? Okay, so flat white has arrived. It's slightly weird in being exceptionally large. I mean, that's a latte to me. It's at least 12 ounces. Um, again, we've got latte art and actually a sort of a reasonable texture to the milk, which is weird because the barista seems to just leave the milk steamer with the milk warmed on for about 20 seconds and then press the button so he's obviously using some sort of auto steaming function but it, it steamed the milk okay. Now, I'm not sure about temperature, it doesn't feel too hot but I'm going to just try it and see what it's like. Okay, so it's not nuclear hot but it's hotter than I'd like. It hasn't altered the flavour of the milk but it's definitely had an effect on it. Coffee, well it's not It doesn't really taste as much, to be honest. It's not, it doesn't taste as bitter as the Starbucks or the Coffee One. Kind of, it's a little bit lost. The flavours are a bit lost though. I don't know if it's just that it's such a large drink. It doesn't really taste of anything. It's sort of okay, bearable. It's a lot better than I thought it would be, um, as was the case with, with Starbucks as well. Um, but would I spend two pounds, 50 or two pounds, 80 on one, whatever it costs? of my own money? Mm, probably not. So we're back in our coffee shop, back in the studio, and what conclusions can we draw from this? Well, one thing that I did notice was that coffee was considerably better, and considerably better made than the last time I had a coffee in any of those places, probably 10 years ago. The milk texturing was much better, in fact, much better than expected. Years ago, you used to get lots of pappy froth if you ordered any sort of milk Based coffee, pappy froth at the top and then weird sort of heated up milk at the bottom, just terrible, terrible drinks and usually incredibly hot. Some of those, particularly the Coffee One and the Costa were a little bit too hot to start with, but not so hot that they were undrinkable. They burnt your tongue a little bit at first if you drank them a bit too early, but they hadn't really altered the taste of the milk, which happens when you heat it over about 60 degrees. Now, in terms of the taste of the coffees themselves, they wouldn't make me buy one if there was an option of a good independent coffee shop nearby. Would I buy one if there was no independent coffee shop nearby, no decent coffee shop nearby, no way of making decent coffee at home? Possibly. I mean, overall, I'd probably rate them fairly evenly at about a five out of 10. I don't think any of them was any better than the other. Starbucks was a little bit more bitter than the others. Costa had um, better milk possibly, even though it was a bit hot, the actual texture was about right for a flat white. Coffee One should have had the best coffee, um, but it was let down a little bit by the milk not being textured quite right. It was more like a cappuccino. Costa was let down by the fact that it was far too big for a flat white. It was much more like a latte, so a lot of the flavor of it was lost. It was difficult to really compare it. But it seemed like the coffee was maybe 
just a bit of under extracted maybe. It didn't seem to have an awful lot of flavour going on. There wasn't much acidity because I think it's quite a dark roast, but it seemed like it had come out quite quickly. I have no idea how the barista managed to steam the milk using that auto steam function because the milk actually was pretty good. I was expecting something terrible. So I think that one of the takeaways we can get here is the quality of coffee from these high street chains has improved over the last 10 years. And I think that's mainly a consequence of uh, the independent coffee shops pushing them up and maybe people being a bit more fussy about their coffee and not wanting something that frankly was pretty terrible 10 years ago. Uh, doesn't cut the mustard so much now. In terms of the actual underlying coffee itself, would I drink an espresso at any of those places? I don't think so. I think it would have been very bitter almost everywhere. Coffee one tasted maybe slightly less bitter than the others. Um, none of them was great, to be frank, as an underlying espresso. So I don't think I'd go in there having an espresso. I think it'd be actually pretty bad. But because the milk was fairly well made in all of the places, it kind of disguised any bad flavours of the of the coffee itself. Um, so overall then, probably maybe worth trying if you're really desperate. I probably wouldn't, but they're a lot better than they used to be. And that really surprises me. I thought I was going to be making, making this video and absolutely slating these coffees. And to be fair, I didn't have the ammunition to do that. They really weren't that bad. They weren't brilliant, but there was a bit of latte art. The milk was relatively well textured in all of the places. There were no really bad elements of those coffees that I could single out and really lay into. And I am a total coffee snob, so that really tells you something about how the quality of coffee in this country has improved over the last 10 years. Okay, that's all for now. Any ideas that you have for future videos that you'd like us to cover, maybe you want me to go and taste a McDonald's coffee or a Greg's coffee, you may have to give me some money to do that, I warn you. But if you like our videos, please like them and subscribe. Uh, we'll be back soon.